so we are moving towards uh, fifth generation communication system in india uh, airtel and uh, uh, geo have already done so these are the uh, standard bodies which do so just to give you an idea this is the release which 3gpp says from 15 onwards you can see here it is fifth generation communication 18 onwards it is called advanced uh, 5g and then maybe release 20 21 somewhere around we will start calling it uh, 60 maybe 22 21 uh, no one has decided it. so that is how it will be working and this is the timeline uh, around 2027 uh, we will start working on uh, uh, release uh, 60 versions and 2030 probably commercial deployments of fifth generation communication systems this is how we have moved from first generation to fifth generation communication systems uh, we have done what we did is that first generation communication we did the voice we digitized voice then we started data then we perfected, uh, perfected the data, the data and then we are moving into fifth generation communication and systems. And as the data, and data rate increases, then there are so many, people, are so many people, people who will be using it. And, and the most important aspect of it is that enhanced mobile broadband. This is increasing the data rate. Massive machine type communications. This is IoT. IoT applications using 5G, which Dr. Paul mentioned. And then ultra reliable low latency communication systems which will be used for driverless cars and robotic surgery and all other machine dependent uh, critical uh, operation uh, in even in uh, machine shops and then in industries. I IoT where how we will be using this one and then uh, we are using of course I will not make the comparison of how uh, the technologies are moving uh, but as you can see here massive machine type communication is used for smart agriculture logistic free tracking and enhanced mobile broadband is used for ERVR applications 8k 4k UHP ultra high definition dot uh, televisions uh, communications uh, video communications and then uh, critical IOT applications are used for the low latency reliable communication systems and these are what which we will be going and skip this part of it and then what are the essential technologies which is needed for fifth generation is new radio massive MIMO, millimeter wave beam forming dense networks heterogeneous networks full duplex communication device to device communications mobile edge computing artificial intelligence and uh, network slicing and uh, i'll skip this part of it but this is how antenna tracking and then uh, switching between the antennas and then how one can Two using phase studies, and then you can have multiple beams, and then you can track and trace, and uh, you can create massive MIMO beam forming technology. And this is one of the critical factors of. Uh, for um, fifth generation communication systems and this could be used for industry 4.0 okay. robotic big data sensors this is the way in the smart logistics which uh, traditionally which was in the linear fashion it could be done completely automated and smart logistics could be brought into the picture and then it could be used in uh, distribution centers in interiors in urban zones in uh, ports in suburban areas all these places will be using and grocery packing robots will be utilizing the fifth generation communication system because the most critical aspect is the sensors which will be used for positioning precise positioning is one of the very critical important aspect of it which we use for using not just fifth generation beyond fifth generation communication systems which we will be using and then how do we use this artificial intelligence and in, uh, just briefly uh, Paul Dr. Mentioned Paul mentioned about it, but what happens, but what happens is the machinery network simply cannot predict. predict. So we need, we need to utilize, to utilize artificial intelligence and machine learning, machine learning technologies for beam forming technologies. Beam forming because, technologies. Because, because if you have millimeter waves and you have multiple beams, and then how do you track? So you, you need uh, report beam state information, beam, state information, reference, beam signal, reference signal, all these parameters, uh, all these parameters have, have to be done and then how do you choose which is the beam to be that used, is how, that is how, look at it, simple, look at it, simple. If, you are if you are using a beam forming technology, technology you need all, all 
these parameters beam index reference signal distance position speed channel quality indicator all these parameters depend upon these parameters you choose the which beam you would use in the build latency goes for a toss so you will have to use some intelligent method of doing that is where ai ml comes into the picture and then you can use it for massive mimo applications and then you could use other things and then we have strengths of using so wireless has its own strength machine learning has its own strengths then we could utilize all these things and ai for wireless Uh, Snapdragon, Snapdragon, which is the chip which is used by Qualcomm, they have integrated all these artificial intelligence into the system already, and then it works on, on that. How how do you enable the AI ML for air interface part of it? And some of the AI ML research areas are uh, listed out. I'll skip these things because I just want to quickly wind up. Machine learning, and then active positioning or RF sensing has a variety of use cases. That's what is important, and then that is how we are going to utilize in different releases, and then work on these things. I skip all this part of it, and then I'll just go to there are hundred different ways in which you can do a spatial beam isolation, duplex, analog cell mitigation, mitigation because you want to have device to device communication, full duplex communication. All these things have to be managed. You need a really new kind of technology, which is already being now researched and implemented. And positioning is, which was never, never an important part of it. In 5G, four, four, three main thing was increase the data rate, then IoT applications, and then reduce latency. But we are now concentrating on positioning. You it we always assume gps is the solution for that but gps is using external satellites that is no good in here inside so you need a precise positioning inside the, the house or godown or a factory and that precise positioning is done by the fifth generation communication in release 18 that is 5g advance so this is how we so are uh, skip but these are real Vastly fascinating key research vectors and enabling fast towards 6G. These are the merging of the world, scalable network architecture, spectrum expansion, new radio designs, cumulative residency, wonderful areas which are happening, and of course, which Dr. Paul mentioned, on-device AI use cases today. How it is going to be intelligent wireless edge and all this. These you can just see. I'll skip it. Start stop at this point. Ultra fast, large capacity, low to. Whatever we did in 5G, we want to expand beyond that. So that is how we need to do. And one other last important aspect of this AI, which is used going to be used in the air interface part. Traditionally, we have assumed that this is the modulation scheme. 3GPP said we will use OFTM as a technology. And in the third generation CDMA, we use. To CDMA used in second generation. Why do we have to get confined to only such things? Depending upon the requirement, I choose my appropriate air interface. And who decides that? That is where my AI ML comes into the picture. And then AI native air interface, uh, AI native air interface work is wonderfully going on, and these are some of the things. And also cellular structures. Why are you stuck with saying this is a cellular communication system? That I have a base station and say we make the hexagonal structures. We speak it teaching in our school uh, colleges, uh, mobile communication cells, cellular cell structures. This, that. That's an old concept, old hat. We forget it. Let's say cellular architectures, and then it is. Is not base station centric. It has to be user centric. And then how do we go about doing? Yeah, I think uh, there is holographic radio, and then these are some of the IP uh, international telecommunication in 2030. This uh, identified so many things that that can be done in 6G and 5G. Uh, just one satellite uh, thing, which since uh, Dr. Paul mentioned, I just want to mention, show that, and then. Uh, uh, These are all intelligent reflection reflection surface. So how one can do that? Uh, this is precise positioning, which I have been emphasizing all along. That we need to look at the precise positioning that we can do. Uh, uh, these are the active Leo satellites. 
the satellite operators who are the people who in the leo orbit satellite who is going to challenge our terrestrial based cellular communication system wireless communication system that is going to be challenged by starlink that is elon musk of course if elon musk goes the way in which he, he is uh, handling twitter i don't know how what will happen but uh, i am sure starlink will not be affected by the, his uh, alliances in twitter uh, after uh, by twitter but uh, star link project probably is going ahead as it is uh, but there is one web which is uh, there is an indian part of it airtel is uh, a part of it uh, just two day, a few days back uh, uh, dr vaklu would be knowing one web and uh, dr paul will be knowing you telsat and one web have merged now two major companies have merged and come together and so there is a very interesting work which is going on and 36 satellites were recently launched but uh, starlink uh, elon musk is launching so many number of satellites he is doing and there is another contender known as uh, kupio amazon company is also uh, trying to get into this uh, so it's very interesting how the starlink works and when uh, you can calculate i will skip this part of it but just to give you a reference these are the kind of leo mio this one Uh, how we are going to work and then you can compare how each of those things are compared but this is another interesting area it will be of course no nothing will vanish ground based terrestrial based cellular system will not vanish because of bios uh, or because of the or, or higher altitude platform apps uh, both will continue to be there but one will be assisting uh, uh, and in uh, release 18 uh, 3gpp uh, release 18 uh, there is a standard which has been beautifully designed such that there is a uh, interoperation between uh, satellite based system non terrestrial systems and terrestrial systems is also given in this one. Uh, so with this uh, i just uh, i just wanted to show that by g6 g there is no end to it which will be thank you very much thank you very much